basically we have to ensure that we look at the tagging, which is very important. So we don't come back again and start doing continuity tests and all that to be able to identify where this cable is feeding or where this cable is going to. It's very important. Good day, everyone. You're watching Makoge Enterprises. Today's lesson is going to be on uh, procedures to carry out termination on panel boards. So this panel board could be either the distribution board or the DBs, SMDBs, which are sub-main distribution board, MCC motor control centers, or an LV panel. So while we are carrying out um, cable termination on the different panel boards, we should follow strictly the different procedures, which I'm going to mention, but it's not limited to all these or probably might, but we should follow all these different steps to get our work done with quality as well as safety, which is very important. So I will dive straight to the different points. So we will be discussing them gradually as we keep unfolding. So I will share my screen. So we get started. Okay, you're watching Makoka Enterprises. Please do like, share, subscribe, and keep sharing, as well as turn on the notification button so that when anytime we upload a new video, you're going to be notified. And thanks for watching and keep watching. MDB, which is a main distribution board, SMDB, which is sub main distribution board, MCC, which is motor control centers, and DB, which is distribution board, etc. So move to the first point. Ensure conduits, cable trays, or ladders for horizontal and vertical drops are installed or is installed, inspected, and approved. So we have to ensure that we have our containment works, which are already prior to uh, proceeding with our different cables to be installed. So we go through different processes. Get the shop drawings or the drawings are ready get it approved from the consultant, and then we get these drawings, move to site and start doing our installation for different containment services. So as you can see, if you see the graphic down, you will notice that we have uh, cable trays as well as cable ladders on the, others, on the other side. So we install all our cable containment works. Once, once we are done with that, we raise an inspection, get an approval, then we proceed now with the installation of the cable pulling. we we'll move to the next point, which is the second point. Make sure cable pulling is done for both incoming and outgoing cables, and it should be pulled as per load schedule, single line diagram, and following the route as per the approved layout with cable tag identification on the cables. It's very important. So while when we are done with the first point, which is the cable containment works, after we finish with the cable containment works, we raise the inspection, it's approved. Now we, we begin with the second point, which is cable pulling itself. So we have to ensure that we do our cable pulling for both incoming and the outgoing. So you notice that on our panel board, we'll have the incoming supply, and then we have the outgoing feeders, which are going to say probably to different loads, which are feeding from that particular panel board. So we have to make sure that we pull all the different cables the incoming and the outgoing. So we ensure as well that the cables are all pulled as per the load schedule. So we look at the load schedule, ensure that the cables is pulled as per the load schedule. So we start looking at certain, uh, certain things like we look at the cable size, we ensure that we pull the right cable size for that particular area which is supposed to be pulled. And then we look as well at the single line diagram, and then we follow the routines which is mentioned in the cable layout. So we look at the different routines. Based on that, we'll be able to pull our cables to, to go to the respective location which is supposed to be pulled to. And then also we ensure that we place a cable tag identification. So this is very important. So if you look at the cable tag, when we are done with the cable pulling, which is leaving from one point to another, for all the different incoming and outgoing cables. So we put, provide a cable tag, which will be as per what is mentioned in either the, uh, the, the single line diagram. Right it there, it could either be temporary marking. So when we do the temporary marking, we ensure that we keep it as such, 
And then while we are doing tabination, we should be able to identify that this cable is going for this particular pump. This cable is going to this distribution board. This cable is leaving from probably SMDB is moving to this distribution board. This cable is leaving from the submain distribution board is going to this isolator, which is feeding this electric fan. So basically we have to ensure that we look at the tagging, which is very important. So we don't come back again and start doing continuity tests and all that to be able to identify where this cable is feeding or where this cable is going to. It's very important. So move now to the next point, which is the third point. Avoid unnecessary bends of cables and always ensure to maintain its minimum bending radius. This is very important. So if you look at avoiding bends, we have to ensure that we start avoiding the bends when we are carrying out the cable containment work. If you look at the first point, which is ensure conduit cable tray ladders are installed horizontally and vertically. So we have to ensure that we do our cable containment works to avoid all these bendings. We avoid all the unnecessary bendings to ensure that we have our cables that are moving in a rectilinear um, pattern, which is very important. And then also to maintain the minimum bending radius. This is very important. So for the minimum bending radius, well now I will have to define it first. Minimum bending radius refers to the stress exerted on the radius of the cable while making a bend which might either lead to a longer or shorter service life of the cable. The radius bend should, should be in reference of the overall diameter of the cable multiplied by a certain factor. So if you see here, I mentioned as per karama, should not exceed or should be less than 12 times the overall diameter of the cable. So if you go through different catalogs, I might be talking of, um, the cable manufacturer catalog, you find out that we have they have um, uh, certain sizes of cables and their overall diameter. So you take the overall diameter and multiply with this um, factor, which is mentioned here as the Karama rules and regulation, which is 12 times, and it should not exceed that minimum bending radius. So anything that exceeds more than that will not be acceptable. So while you're carrying out inspection on site, you ensure that all the cable bends that have been done on site should not exceed its minimum bending radius. This is very important. Minimum bending radius ref reference to BS5467. So this is uh, as per the British standard. So the main mention of 1.5 square mm right up to 16 square mm, we use a factor of six multiplied by the overall diameter of the cable is for circular conductors. And then we have from 25 square mm cable and above, we use eight multiplied by, which is a factor multiplied by overall diameter of the cable as well. So this is the minimum bending radius of the different sets of cable as per British standard. So if you see this graphic down, we have a cable which is bent and this is a radius which is a bending radius. So if, say, for example, we use our overall diameter of the cable multiplied by a factor, which probably you're using uh, Karama rules and regulation if you're in Qatar, or probably you're using Bucci standard. If you multiply by the, the factor, which is being shown by the, the code, it should not exceed that minimum bending radius. So anything that exceeds that is not acceptable. If you're carrying out inspection on site, you ensure that it should not exceed its minimum bending radius. We'll move now to the fourth point, which is carry out continuity and insulation resistance tests for both, for both incoming and outgoing cables with test values recorded. This is very important. So once you're done with all the cable pulling, for both incoming and outgoing, you make sure that you minimize the, the unnecessary bends and you make sure that you maintain minimum bending radius. And you find out that once these cables are being pulled at a level of bending to move now to the level of the panel board, that is where now you start noticing the bending radius have exceeded its minimum bending radius. It's very important to 
keep noticing where you're carrying out inspection on site or probably you're doing the installation or the actual installation on site. So now the fourth point which I, I talked of, the continuity and installation resistant test. So we have to ensure that we carry out continuity tests and installation resistant tests. I made a video on this on um, testings and inspection. So if you go through the video which I've made, you'll get to understand the concept and how to carry out continuity and installation resistant tests and the different instruments that we are using in order to carry out these different tests. So continuity test normally is um, to ensure that we will have continuity on the cable, which will ensure or give us the, the guarantee that we will have electrons flowing through the cable without any issue. It will move from one end to another with no problem. So we move now to insulation resistant test. Insulation resistant test now in this case is um, to ensure that we will not have two conductors of different polarities um, come in contact maybe over time or at any time. So we will not have two conductors of different potential which will come in contact. So we carry out this test now between um, different phases, between phase and neutral, between phase and earth, to ensure that we have a satisfactory value, then to give us a full guarantee that we will not have any join between the two conductors of different polarity. The fifth point, which is panel boards should be installed as exact, on the exact location as per approach shop drawing and following related standards for installation. It's very important. So we go through the different shop drawings that we have to carry out the installation of the panel board. It could either be distribution board, sub-main distribution boards, MCC, which is motor control centers, MCPs, motor control panels, um, LV panels, main distribution boards. So we carry out the installation and it should be as per the shop drawing, which is approved as well by the consultant. And ensure to raise an inspection, get approval prior to proceeding with the, the successing act activities. The sixth point, raise inspection to get approval for dead test, continuity and insulation resistant test or mega test and panel board installation. The seventh point, proceed with laying of the cables on the vertical cable tray or ladder or ladder drop to panel as per their respective feeders. Hold the cable to the cable tray and ladder with a PVC or steel cable tire, depending on the project requirement. It's very important. So when we are done with the cables, while we are dropping now the cables on the vertical um, runs on the cable tray or cable ladders, which is moving to the level of the panel board, we have to ensure that we provide uh, clips which are going to hold the cables on the either on the cable tray or on the cable ladder. It could either be PVC or steel, depending on the project requirement. I'll take us to a graphic. As you can see here, we have a cable that has been pulled and it's moving vertically upward. So we have these cable ties which is holding the cables to the cable containment work, which is either um, cable tray or cable ladder. As you can see here also on the horizontal cables that are pulled as well, we have cable ties, which are also holding the cables to the cable containment works. Here also, as you can see, we have our panel board, we have our containment, we have also cable that is pulled, and then is moving to the level of the panel board. We we'll move now to the eight point. Provide a suitable gland size based, a suitable gland based on the cable size or the type of cable. It could either be fire rated or non fire rated. Refer to appendices for gland chart. We also have a gland a gland chart. If you check also from the cable the, from your gland manufacturer, you will find. From their different catalogs as well, you see different gland sizes with different cable sizes. Proceed with glanding and termination after all above inspections are approved. 
inspection for material inspection, panel board installation, cable pulling, dead test installation as mentioned above. So we carry out the different tests as well, ensure that all the different parts that have been mentioned above are all approved, validated prior to proceeding with the glanding and termination. So we gland our cables based on looking at the appropriate size of the cable based on that we select the gland size that will be matching with the respective cables for both the incoming and the outgoing. If it is for 300 square mm, you provide a suitable gland based on the size of the cable. So we start looking at either two core 300 square mm or two core 240 square mm, three core 240 square mm. We look at uh, four core uh, 240 square mm. We look at either five core. So depending on the size of cable, and then you look at the type as well, which I made mention of fire rated or non-fire rated. So all these also take, we take all this into consideration to select the size gland, the gland size, which is required for that particular cable. We'll move to the nine point, which is provide suitable locks, lock size as per, as well as shrinkable sleeves for cables, wire glanding, and sleeves. Okay, we provide a suitable lock size. So these different locks as well vary with the different cable size. So if you go through the catalog from your different manufacturers, they will give you the different sizes of glands, which you are going to match as well with the different sizes of the conductors. And also for the sleeves as well, they'll give you different sizes of sleeves, which are going to match with the different sizes of cables. So you provide that, you put the, sling, the sleeves, and then you shrink it on the cable before carrying out a termination. So as you can see here, we have a graphic of our cable gland. We have this cable as well here, which is glanded to the panel board. And then we have accessories of um, the cable gland. And then we have a crimping tool, which is used to crimp the cable, uh, the, 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 the locks on the, the cable or on the conductor. And then we have some persons here carrying out uh, glanding and termination. We we'll move to the 10 point, which is uh, provide suitable earth bond from earth intact of cable gland to panel frame. It's very important. So after carrying out our glanding and termination, we have to ensure that we provide a suitable earth bond or bonding conductor for from our earth tag and then we connect to the panel frame so that we have at continuity. 11 point, we provide at or at conductor labeling after cable glanding and termination is done and identification. So after all this has been done, we have to ensure that we carry out a suitable identification tag, which is based as per each, which is based on the project requirement. So depending on that, we will know the exact material to be used for our identification, the colors as well to be used, and how the different characters are going to look like or how they're going to be placed on the identification tag, which is very important. So once all that is done, we can now proceed with the next activity, which is proceeding with um, the live test or carrying out um, energizing the panel so that we can keep the panel functional, which is very important. So um, all these are just um, procedures and a way of which we have to follow in order to carry out um, termination of cables on our way out, the different steps that we are carrying our works with quality as well as safety to meet the project requirement. Till then, you're watching Makoge Enterprises.